The moon-base concept serving a permanent presence of humans on the moon has been proposed by NASA since the late 1950. In 1961, the Apollo program was launched aiming to research and explore the moon, thereby facilitating human life on this planet in the future. However, things ended. After Apollo 17 in 1972, the program came to a close. Decades later passed with many presidential terms and many space programs enacted, but the dream of a moon outpost remained distant until a daring outsider appeared, Elon Musk's SpaceX. Famous for being ambitious, Elon Musk has built the giant Starship rocket to make his dream of a multi-planetary life come true, and building a moon base is actually one of the vital steps in his plan. In 2020, SpaceX's CEO declared that SpaceX's Starship can serve as part of Moon Base Alpha, with no need to bring early ships back. So, how will the Starship moon base be designed? In 2021, NASA announced Starship as the victor among two other competitors, securing a $2.9 billion contract to construct the Artemis lunar land called Starship HLS, NASA's Artemis after the ancient Greek goddess of the moon and the twin sister to Apollo. The program guarantees peaceful and civil exploration of the moon. Starship HLS is scheduled to be launched in Artemis 3 in 2026, and at the time I made this report, the Starship prototype was gearing up for its third test flight in March. A Starship lunar lander is designed for a one-way trip. Therefore, instead of throwing them away in space, why not transform them into permanent fixtures? Into integral to the emerging lunar infrastructure, this novel idea calls for excellent initiatives to simplify the operational procedure and save costs. Most notable is the project team's solutions for building a base on the moon in the Space Studies Program 2021 Strasbourg at the International Space University. There is a well-established and researched idea of utilizing the large volume and properties of empty fuel tanks to create robust space habitats. While this is applicable to any sufficiently large rocket body, after surveying the current state of the art launchers and what bodies can be delivered to the lunar surface, the most mature concept was using the SpaceX Starship human landing system as a structural basis for the lunar settlement. The concept is to decommission a Starship HLS and transform it into a permanent base while using its entire internal volume, including the fuel tanks, as a habitat. The additional volume provided by the conversion of the fuel tanks means there is great potential for renting out this space to other entities to generate revenue and promote sustainability and growth. This plan relies mostly on existing technologies and limited modifications to the vehicle, including using a series of rovers, modular robotic construction, autonomous system, Marocas, for the purpose of setting up equipment to horizontalize the lander on its side. Additionally, they will aid in setting up surface infrastructure and stacking regolith on top of the base for crew protection. This may makes the ROSE's base solutions incredibly viable for the construction of a lunar base in the near future. The plan to transform an active vehicle into a large, habitable volume requires a series of technical steps. To assist in this operation, the Maracas fleet will be developed and utilized in the transportation sequence. First, Starship SS ROSE's is the first lander to launch and arrive prior to the crewed lander. It is uncrewed and stocked with equipment and supplies to support humans at the base site of the South Pole of the Moon. This will later become the permanent base for the incoming crew. The crewed SS-501 will follow and land at a safe distance away from SS Roses. The crew will remotely operate the Maracas rover fleet from SS-501 for the purpose of deploying power reactors, solar panels, and radiators, as well as draining remaining fuel into their respective tanks. Second, the Maracas will install a system that will assist the crew in horizontalizing the SS Roses on the ground. Some crew members will conduct their first lunar extra vehicle activity to initiate the horizontal maneuver of the SS Roses, thus becoming Roses base. This is referred to as groundbreaking day. At that point, HLS is connected to a specialized hinge and cable system, allowing the ship to be placed horizontally on the ground. Third, the propellant tanks will be removed and repurposed for habitable spaces, accommodating crew cabins, storage areas, and research facilities. The crew will install floors, walls, lights, bathrooms, life support systems, ventilation, water tanks, beds, and any other equipment that the habitat requires. The volumes will be occupied with their intended equipment, whether this is laboratory equipment, agriculture area, gym, lounge, 
or infirmary. After completion of the horizontal procedures, the remaining crew members will depart SS-501 and arrive at Rosas Base, where they will spend the remainder of the mission. SpaceX's Starship is reported to it can carry up to 200-300 metric tons of mass to the lunar surface. Expendable mode inside an 1,100 cubic meters payload fairing. The assumption of the team is that there is a limitation of 100 tons of useful payload. The Starship uses methane and oxygen stored in two large tanks, which are estimated at 600 cubic meters and 800 cubic meters, respectively. These volumes will be transformed into habitable volumes. The bay will need to be modified on Earth prior to the launch, with the mounting of rigid supports that will be used as a skeleton for additional interior structures and fittings. This is done to minimize the workload of the crew on the moon. The interior of the Starship will be divided into three equal height floors connected by stairs. Next up, furniture and two airlocks will be equipped and the entire structure will be pressurized. The original SpaceX Starship concept design proposes two airlocks, both provided with cable-suspended elevators used for payload deployment. One of the Starship airlocks will be modified to include a retractable corridor that can be extended up to five meters away from the main body of the base. This corridor can then be covered by regolith to protect the crew against radiation and micrometeorite impacts. The second airlock will be repurposed into an extended observation deck which allows the crew to see their surroundings as well as the Earth. The final step is to cover the ship with about 5 meters or 16 feet of lunar regolith offering protection against radiation and micrometeorites. The reason why Starship HLS catches the eyes of the team is its outstanding design and its low cost. The payload area of the Starship is about 1,000 cubic meters. This proposal would tip over the lunar Starship and cut it open to use three times as much volume and enable it to be buried for radiation shielding. Thales Alenia also rolled out their first moon base concept for the Artemis project. Thales Alenia Space, the joint company between Thales and Leonardo, has won a contract from the Italian space agency, ASI, to conduct a feasibility study of 16 design concepts to support a human presence on the moon. ASIA's initiative will be focusing on the shelter, a pressurized lunar surface module to be used by astronauts in an emergency and also as a starting point for surface exploration, as well as on a lunar telecommunication system to facilitate communications between the lunar base, the lunar gateway space station, and Earth. Other aspects to be studied include pressurized surface modules such as a lunar laboratory for scientific experiments, a new generation pressurized observation dome on Gateway, and a habitation module for astronauts. Compared to Thales Alenia's vehicle, there is no doubt that Starship is completely superior in size. Why do we need a tiny module when we have over a thousand cubic meters in Starship? Does this base have any use at all? If we assume the flag in the image is a standard size of 1.8 meters, the module has a length of around 10 meters and about 2.5 meters in diameter. SpaceX Starship will be 50-60 meters long and 9 meters in diameter. Another competitive advantage that helps Starship become a bright candidate is its low price, allowing it to significantly lower the cost of creating infrastructure. The mass production capability of SpaceX's Starships on an assembly line forecasts considerably lower costs for these one-way lunar shuttles compared to alternative options for lunar infrastructure. The primary objective behind employing Starship as a cornerstone of lunar bases is to initiate surface operational capacity at an economically sustainable cost. For instance, if a Starship base can effectively support a crew of 20 individuals for six months between crew changes, the entire program could potentially operate below $150,000 per person per day. This stands in stark comparison to the cost of the ISS program, estimated at $10 million per person per day. Moreover, a low Earth orbit space station utilizing similar hardware would be significantly more cost effective due to lower delta V requirements. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.